Thank you for joining us today, everyone, and everyone who tunes in later. And I love that song, I'll Be Loving You Always, and we can always count on the Christ to be there for us. The love of God will always be there. So good morning. Um, I guess we could start today with I'm not a body. I am free. I am as God created me. I'm not a body, not contained, unbound, unlimited, free. God created us free. As God created me spirit in a state of grace forever. So as we listen this morning, let's listen from that space of spirit to the loving message master teacher will reveal today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karen, for your introductory words. Yeah, and this song <clears throat> that we just listened from, it is from Harry N Nilsson, always. It is also the transition song from the first to the second part of this one hour video where we find ourselves and those who know this spirit and this series of splendor of love pretty well know that uh, this is in love is a many splendor thing. And <clears throat> that first episode is called Just For You. And so he talks about in 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 this video <clears throat> uses um, expressions how Jesus is speaking to us and he uses this uh, little booklet which actually is also free for download on the masterteacher.tv in the book booklets uh, page available and uh, there is a part where um, it, it, those are excerpts from the course and from the New Testament and uh, compilations basically and pretty much at the end of the booklet uh, it's called I am with you always and so if you're interested in that or uh, didn't discover it yet on the website feel free to uh, download that for yourself um, a part an inclusion at the very end is also lesson 235 God in his mercy wills that I be saved and that is when we acknowledge and recognize that, um, yes, love is a many splendor thing, and yet there is the love of God behind every expression of love. And that we, of course, we make that work or transformational work for ourselves um, in, in, the, <clears throat> in those steps that uh, how the master teacher expresses it, that there has to be another way of seeing things of any application, um, how it is exchanged or experienced on the timeline. Uh, and uh, he, he expresses it for a reason to be here. Huh? And so every human consciousness needs to find out that there must be another way than just to go along the timeline and and meaninglessly follow the concept of death and uh, basically choose death as a reality for oneself, but really come into that awakening expression of what life truly is. And that is really the only difference I always see between any offer that we find on, on the spiritual marketplace. Um, if minds have undergone this experience, have had a revelatory experience, uh, such mind notes perfectly well that anything that is part of perception is not what really life is. And anything that comes and goes and is in that sense dedicated to the idea of death is not the ultimate goal and it doesn't really represent who we are, what we are. No? Yes, I'm still as God created me. So he will also mention in that video uh, that is part of this section in this booklet of the concept of the self from chapter 31. And I will just make uh, here the, uh, the bridge to the, to the video by reading here a few sentences that he speaks in this video. The whole basis of the idea, once you decide to change your mind, is to always offer to God, to the Holy Spirit, 
the realization that all the decisions you have been making about yourself are not really how God is directing you. The love of God for you is not concerned about your capacity to decide outcomes that you want within your own mind. And so that directs us, of course, uh, to a communication that goes beyond just managing time space within human decisions between literally nothing and nothing, but really opening up the communication that is singular and that is about a completely different way of seeing that he calls in A Course in Miracles, the vision, the vision of Christ. And this is what is given us. This is what we open up also by joining with his mind, with his teachings and uh, bringing into our awareness that this is really all in our mind and we have all the strengths to see things completely different. So let's just go along here and uh, listen for a moment to this second part of this first episode. Love is a many splendid thing just for you, just for me. I'm back. I'm back. Uh, we were singing together, the center lute on the camera. We were singing together, I'll be loving you, always. With the love that's true, always. When the things you plan need a helping hand, I will understand. Always, days may not be fair, always, that's when I'll be there, always, not for just an hour, not for just a day, not for just a year, but always. <laughs> Thanks for putting up with my efforts to show you the joy I feel in expressing in a script my determination that I'm going to be with you always with absolutely no regard to how I appear to be in this factoring of my own mind. Shall we say why? We're sharing together individually in what appears to be our body formulation here. I'll put this down for a moment. That we've been searching outside of ourselves for an answer to the problem that besets us in the idea that we seem to go through cycles of time within our own mind in which the evidence for which we are searching dissipates somehow when we begin to lose the love that we had. We're told that that's the nature of things. My Savior Jesus, from the time he came into this cycle, said, this is not the nature of things. You are whole and you are perfect as you were created. And that certainty is what for always means. That certainty there, in that moment of joy, was a whole conversion of your mind and what you thought you were. I'm beginning to meet from outside of this framework of time more and more evidence of the raising of the principle of energy that was manifested in the species, in the idea of man, in his conversion from body form to the resurrection of the nature of who he really is. Yes, it is about always. It is about always. 
listen about always. Blessed are they which do hunger and are thirsty after righteousness, for they shall be filled. I will never leave you comfortless. I will come to you, and on that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Listen, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. Here's Jesus now. When I said, I'm with you always, I meant it literally. I'm not absent to anyone in any situation, in any situation, because I am with you always. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Look with me. My mind will always be like yours because we were created as equal. It was only my decision that we are now sharing that gave me all power in heaven and earth. My only gift to you is to help you make that same decision with me. Did you see that? My gift to you is to help you make the same decision that I have made. Look, see how necessary it is at this part in space-time to continue to decide. Very simply because the power of decision in the factoring of my self-concept is one, very literally, where I am deciding the outcomes that I want in regard to where I find myself in this body identity. In the resurrection of Jesus, which has been accomplished along with his resurrection, the instructions we have accepted in his, let's use Sermon on the Mount for a moment, are simply to recognize that the power of decision was ours to make in regard to what we wanted to see about ourselves at that moment, at that moment, at that moment. Many of you now are walking around in this idea of the story from the satellite that's being told and the miracles that are beginning to happen in his sudden appearance, in his sudden appearance, in his, in his sudden appearance. The laws make you happy. You ready? Should we teach this for a minute? I'm going to teach. They call me the old man. I followed some instructions. I've been through exactly the pain, loneliness, and death that our Jesus Savior went through and that you went through because it's impossible that the decisions that I am making and have made were not correspondences that had trapped me in the idea that I was a body form. In the reappearance of Jesus in his resurrection and now in your redefinition of yourself, saying to me is I am rising in my mind from the idea of a new bright light that will be present with me in this circumstances of light. Let me express in case the opportunity doesn't arise again because many of you are leaving this cycle of time altogether. I want to say I'm very grateful I am a the perseverance that once he flashed into your mind, as he has with so many of us, when we couldn't find him anymore, some of us lost confidence in the idea that he was there. He was always there, but there were moments in us when we became perhaps frightened of the light that suddenly began to ascend or descend onto us in these alternatives. But he's right here, and he's right now, and he's sharing his togetherness, togetherness with each other, with each other.
Remember? My only gift to you is to help you make the same decision that we were created equal. This decision is the choice to share it because the decision itself is the decision to share. It is made by giving and is therefore the one choice that resembles true creation. Listen, Jesus would remind you, I am your model for decision. By deciding for God, I showed you that this decision can be made and that you can make it. Look, my part in the appointment is not complete until you join it and give it away. Why? Of yourself. You can do nothing. Because of yourself as a human being, you are nothing. Look with me. I am nothing without my father. And you are nothing without me, because by denying the Father, you are actually denying yourself. And the concept of the self is made by you. Look with me from Jesus now directly. It bears no likeness to you at all. It is an idol made to take the place of your reality as a son. The concept of yourself as a human that now you hold would guarantee that your function here in space-time remain forever unaccomplished and undone. Listen, thus it dooms you to a bitter sense of deep depression and futility. Yet it need not be fixed unless you decide in your mind to hold it past the hope of change and keep it static and concealed within your own mind. The secret of salvation is but this, that you're doing this to yourself. No matter what the form of the attack, this is true. Listen, whoever takes the role of the enemy and of attacker, this is still the truth. Whatever seems to be the cause of all this pain and suffering you feel, it's still only becoming from your own mind. Your goal is to find out who you are. Having denied your identity by attacking creation and its creator, you're now perhaps ready to listen. Now you're learning how to remember the truth. For this attack must be replaced by forgiveness so the thoughts of life may replace thoughts of death. So that the thoughts that you've been holding about yourself, as many of us now are witnessing the uh, destruction of the body, the laying down of the body, the pain, the loneliness, the contradiction that the body holds ourself with, and the idea that I must share with my body formulation in an identity of who I believe I am. In this new frequency of light that's being represented by new decisions we have decided to make, we have decided to make another decision. This with me. This is the mind now of Jesus. Practice with me. Gently. Look again. But in this new aggregation, you discovered by the power of your own mind that you had fixed ideas of your concept on results that you wanted to be true within your own mind. And you inevitably then had to utilize ideas about yourself that you recognize as techniques that you are using in order to verify an accumulation within your self-concept of what you think you are. The availability of my Savior, Jesus Christ, in the re-identity of yourself, in his enlightened mind, and now with mine and with yours, is nothing at all within your own concept, but an increase in another idea that will be available to you about yourself 
if you will release through forgiveness the defensive technique of conceptual mind that you utilize in order to deny you access to that bright light, that bright light that just for the moment relieved you of the necessity to hold on to that conflict of your self-identity within your own mind. Those of us who are now in this procedure, in this worldly endeavor, are beginning to spot ourselves in recognition of the idea of our mind. Thank you for that. Yeah. I see that you just had a glimpse of a light. This is beautiful. The glimpse of the light that we are sharing is not coming from our bodies. Shall we share why? The original light of our body formulation was brought with us when we came into this cycle of time, but it's been dimmed and weakened by the idea that the reflections of space-time light that we've been getting do not hold the entirety of the power of mind power of mind that you just discovered in our relationship with each other. Here's Jesus. Look with me, dear one. He's showing up all over the place. Look, he has absolutely no concern about what you are believing about your body formulation. Here, I just stopped by to tell you that. Now, whatever procedure I'm using, and this is without regard to how I am garbing myself in a body identity. There's always a new way that I can look at myself in a new value of love that I'm finding in the self-confidence of the new certainty of me that is growing in me as it's growing in you. Your previous uncertainty is changing, isn't it? You are becoming more and more certain about a very private identity you have in relationship with yourself. It's good to meet you again. There's a great deal of joy, and this is going to be just a little interlude in private with us, but I want you to know that this idea of the whole idea of telling stories with each other in the miracles that are going on will be very energetic in the idea of light that you can now hold on to. Practice with me. Give it away. Good. The best idea you can formulate about your own defensive mechanism is to give it. The amazing thing about some of these stories being told about the video is there are moments where you've been in deep conflict, you know, where no arbitration was apparently possible, and all of a sudden you said, this is not worth it. Here, take it. Now, the moment you did that with your mind, the other association, perhaps, in his new definition of himself, said, well, wait, wait just a moment. Let's look again. Let's look again. Let's take another look at where we are in this factoring of our mind. We don't seem to have been able to find peace or joy or happiness in the exchanges we thought were necessary in ideas about ourselves. Now suddenly here's the Savior. Now, acting as arbitrator individually within your own mind is a successful factor of at one moment. Christians, there's no secret about this at all. We've already agreed you're doing it to yourself. Anyway, that was very joyous, thank you. That was very joyous in the idea. We're only gonna be together in another moment, so we're going to practice a whole idea of that conversion of light. That conversion of light. That conversion, there's an echo. There's an echo of light. There's another one. Look at me. When we came into this particular evidence of ourself, we began to increase the frequencies of light. It would be inevitable if you're in that body form that you haven't began to re 
examine yourself in the ideas of what you actually want to see out there. Virtually always that occurs as a moment within your own mind when you said uh, there has to be something else. The way I'm looking at this right now and I'm seeing what's going on in this world is impossible. There has to be another way that I can make application of my need. Listen with me now, important to discover a reason for being here. Seems to me that all the reasons that I've been here in a body form I have to live as best I can within this body frame of reference to tread my way along a particular path that defined a beginning and an end and be dead. Here's what's happened with the return of Jesus. He's standing in a new light frame of yours, offering continuing conversion of past and future references, there's a nice one, so that all of a sudden we're, we're standing together. May I? May I come to that one? This becomes a circle of atonement where I begin to recognize you. The simplicity of recognize you will always be contained in the simplicity of recognizing myself because I'm the cause of you. As Jesus reminds you, this world is being caused by you and your identity of yourself. And when you change your mind, this world is going to change. Jesus can read you one prayer, okay? The whole basis of the idea, once you decide to change your mind, is to always offer to God, to the Holy Spirit, the realization and realization that all the decisions you've been making about yourself are not really how God is directing you. The love of God for you is not concerned about your capacity to decide outcomes that you want within your own mind, within your own mind, within your own mind. Father, I need but look upon all things that seem to hurt me and with perfect certainty assure myself God wills that I be saved from this and merely watch them disappear. I need but keep in mind my Father's will for me is only happiness to find that only happiness has come to me. And I need but remember that God's love surrounds his son and keeps his sinlessness forever perfect to be sure that I am saved and safe forever in his arm. I am the son he loves and I am saved because God in his mercy wills that it be so. I am who God loves because he has willed it in the mind of the new bright energy that is coming into our individual minds in the recognition that through Jesus' direction we are discovering the love we're feeling for each other. There was a very important factor, isn't it, that we were using in the idea of memory of our conceptual self. We were recognized and have practiced since Jesus' return that we were actually occupied in ideas in this universe of being here and living within that cycle. We have increased the frequency of the idea of the possibility of self-recognition that have allowed us at this moment to suddenly feel that joy. That joy, that idea of love that's within us.
Thank you. Many of us now are suddenly feeling bright ideas as for no apparent conceptual reason. Some of us said, I can't take this anymore. Some of us said, I need the practice. Some of us, you listening to me, it occurred for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Do you remember this? This script has already been written. The time when you will recognize yourself in your entirety and escape the idea of this conflict has been set. Yet it's determined by the mind, not by what you're seeing out there. All I'm doing with you, with Jesus standing here, is increasing frequencies of decision that it's possible for you to make in regard to this old body form that you see. And suddenly, right in the middle of a vision of yourself, you are taking on aspects of visions of yourself in symbolization of yourself. You're looking very beautiful. All you really need to do is turn to the guy next to you, no matter who he was, and say, wow, where's all that light coming from? <laughs> Where are you suddenly beginning? And, and he said, am I showing that? And he says, yes, how are you doing that conception? And he said, I'm not. I've suddenly discovered that walking with me in this frame of time is this new bright reference in our discovery of the clues we have been given in finding the body form of Jesus. Surprise? He was always walking with us anyway. He was always with us. And we'll be with us. And we'll be gone. And we'll be with us in this conversion of ourself. Listen, it'll never be lost again. Once you have that in your mind, you're going to carry it out with you as you complete this journey. One more thanks for all the love that you've given me because I love you. And the aspects by which we are viewing each other have allowed me to say to you, I'll do anything in the universe. I mean this literally. I'll do anything once I begin to see how inevitable it's going to be that there's another place and time that is available to me in this cycle of time. Because God loves us, each and every one. And we can say together, God bless us. Maybe getting a call any moment now to take a good solid look at about the idea that he's back in this sequence of time. We've had enough ideas of crucifixion. Suddenly he's here in resurrection. In resurrection. In resurrection. Thank you so much. <laughs> Wonderful experience. Well, let's open up the microphones and share how we experience personally that he, Jesus uh, Christ resurrected, as we know, is with us always. Thank you for being here.
as usual, very beautiful and filled with so many wonderful things, truth. And what I was seeing where he was talking about God being love is also happiness. That is what we are. We are happiness. And we're entrusted with the gifts of God to go out and extend that happiness by knowing it in the serviceable instrument, <laughs> recognizing that we're really not contained within the body, but within that mind of Christ. And how he was speaking about um, what was, you know, was coming to me about God being the substance of all form. So spirit being in that state of grace forever, we're extensions of that love into say perhaps the soul, but the soul is con within the soul is contained the whole, the whole. So there's never any split or break in consciousness and truth. So I feel Accepting that gives us the opportunity to go out, be that love, and be that happiness, and just accept our function, which is forgiveness. And in the complete forgiveness, we are remembering that oneself. Thanks. Thank you, Karen. Your microphone to that's supposed to be opened, Karen. Oh, there I go. Um, this is a really happy video. It's um, it's so loving, and <clears throat> yeah. and I, I um appreciate how it starts off. I mean, by talking about how we can go through cycles, we think we have to go through cycles of love. Um, and, but love, it's not, it, we, our mind, Jesus tells us that our mind is like his, <clears throat> you know, that love is what we are. And, and the only reason we step back from that, I mean, that light is showing up all the time <clears throat> in, in the reflection. I mean, Daryl was talking about how all of a sudden you see these reflections of light all around you and. And it's like you 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 just feel the awe of that, or maybe awe is not the the right word, but you just feel the the grace of that. But but that's your light. It's your light that's that's really showing up. And because that is, I mean, the the acceptance of the atonement is the acceptance that everything is one. That is me. And so the only reason we deny that is, and he talks about this, is that we're frightened. We're afraid of the light, and um, and it's it is something to look at. Why, if if it's so available, and our mind is just like Christ, just it's the same as as Christ Jesus. It's just a matter of of stepping into the allowance of that light all the time. And so it's such a grace filled message. And dear one was so loving. Master Teacher was so loving in this video. It is, love is a many splendored thing. It, it, it's a beautiful representation, everything that he talks about, how everything, that, that love is all that we are. And like to just enjoy it and to be it and to express it and to really feel um, maybe even, you know, the excitement of seeing it all around you. I have a little clip that I've, I've got taped here on a piece of furniture that I put there many years ago. And it was from a little book and it says, there are helpers all around you. God is love incarnate. It's like everything is love incarnate and, and to recognize it as that um, just, just allows us to be in a state of grace. Anyway, I really like this video. It's, I, I just really love how Dear One presents himself. Thank you so much, Karen. Yeah, and what you what he mentions in the video, and you mentioned also that is really our function here, you know, the transformation of the fear of that light, which in the Cosmic Miracles he calls it mostly the fear of God. You know, there's the dedication and mentioning as the fourth obstacle 
to peace in chapter 19 and in many other sections he talks about the uh, freeing the mind from that ultimate fear of <clears throat> the totality um, of true identity you know of who I am in truth, what is already given, who I already am. Né? And as you beautifully demonstrated, there's really no reason to be afraid. It's really what we all already are. Né? So <laughs> it becomes kind of a joke then <laughs> to, to see or if I find myself in certain situations where it might pop up for a moment. Né? But the remembrance is so fast to see you now there is no need to stay a moment longer in the fear. It's really just a joke upon myself that I play and I don't need to go down that road anymore. And then, of course, everything is immediately in light and also seen in light in a completely new and different way. So thank you. You know, th yeah, the denial of that um, in your brother, it's, it's just a distrust. Um, it's, it, it's, it's maybe a, um, a marker to look at the lesson, I trust my brother who is one with me, which is every everyone and every, you know, it's just to, to finally being total trust that what you see that it appears as a bodily image is not what the truth is. The truth is the light that is, that that encompasses that that's really there, and so to, forgiveness is just really remembering that all the time, and and being at peace with whoever shows up, regardless of how it shows up. Yeah, uh, yeah, and that includes my fly in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. That's why I I take my flies outside. I am such a a whip. I mean, I can't hurt anything. But anyway. Um, I like the lesson, too, that he brought in God and his mercy wills that I be saved. That's such a, again, it's such a loving lesson. Mm -hmm. I think also mentioning the desolate, lonely, and afraid, when we recognize that everybody in ego is the desolate, lonely, and afraid, but we don't yes. have to stay there. We have that choice. And... You know, very often in the ego, we're like, should I do this? We're making think we're making choices all the time. And those choices are always for the betterment of the ego. So once that's recognized, we can step back and move away from that and recognize, as Master Teacher said, the power of decision is my own. And when he's talking about power, he's talking about light, understanding. And that the true understanding is, as Devavan was saying, our identity as the Christ. That's what we, the only thing we really need to know. Spirit am I in a state of grace forever. And if we come from that place, nothing has any effect on that identity, nothing. And that's the happy dream actually, when we recognize that we are spirit and nothing has any effect on I am. Nothing external to us, no personalities, bombs, germs, whatever it might be. Nothing has any effect on I am. And if we walk around in that grace without fear, as Joel says, the illumined walk without fear by grace, then then we're home free. That's our happy dream. So it's always comes back to the recognition and the acceptance, really the willingness to accept our identity as the Christ. Thanks. Yeah, and it comes really into my awareness and remembrance it's a complete ignorance to believe that the decision out of time in jesus or in christ's mind wouldn't have would not have been yet taken right? that's a complete ignorance that decision for heaven is already made and therefore is already a reflection in my own mind so that can give me then the strength also. No, I don't need to make decisions on my own. That decision is already made for me. I only need to open up for that communication and remember. And he will simply retell me or show me again. Yes, that decision is I helped you already, always. Ne? And now you remember you do great. Ne? So it's, it's uh, I bring it really down to, for me to, 
um, that the whole uh, gentleness of the teaching of that video, it's really an emphasis on remembering and that power of decision you were talking about, which is already in my own, in my own Christ mind, no? not in my own ego mind. No? And that's awesome that we actually open that up now to, to the clarity. No? Yeah, that's yeah. perfect because there's no time in consciousness and that's what we already are. This is just a movie, a review of that. It's all very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Comforting. <laughs> Comforting and exciting and yeah. <clears throat> Nourishing. I like too, it. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. It feels very nourishing. Yeah? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, just the statement that was made at the de denial of Jesus, I guess this is from was from the chorus, denial of, of, of your father is denial of yourself. Right. And it's like the I am is, I mean, father and the son are, are finally one. You know, it's just... We, we we play so small and it's so hard to step out of the boundaries that we've stuck ourselves within, but but we're all of that and it's very exciting, very loving. So we practice, practice, practice until it's our constant state. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. That's really determination, huh? Yeah? That's uh, when the mind doesn't uh, want to run after goals lim of limitation that the world offers. No? And that's uh, uh, that's really where the crossroad is, no? where everyone has to come to. No? As he expresses also, I think it is even bad in lesson 132. No? I lose the word from all I thought it was. It's a wonderful um, practice when you can stand um, in front of either a very um, angry or very frightened mind and and to really feel um, a lot of peace and love and to watch um, a transformation occur. And... And when you do, it, it, as we practice such things, is you you begin to more easily um, experience that that light is always there in everyone. Because some people it transforms more easily than others, but um, but ultimately it does as long as you stay in the constancy of that love. And and it's like we're just watching ourselves unravel into that love and um and it, and it's all and it all becomes you, you you see yourself then in every everything that that love is the same everywhere um, it's, a, it's a constant and we're going home and we are home in, in essence and the truth waking or we are awake yeah, when we recognize that innocence, we're recognizing our own. Yeah. Then we're free. And then the goal is to transfer that everywhere and make all special relationships holy. One. Thank you. And this was this is a really beautiful video. Go ahead, Vidi. Go ahead, Deb. Yeah, I had also a heavy personal. Uh, connection with this whole series of uh, the Splendor because it was his uh, uh, the master teacher's first trip to Austria, my native home country. Né? 
And I went with him also and was privileged to translate his sessions also with other brothers. And so uh, I even, uh, I, I think I translated that video also and uh, when we watched it there and it, it, you know, when there's a lot of light energy there, it just, it is constantly, it becomes a constancy to be with us, né? like it never left me. Né? That uh, grace that touched me so deeply in that communication and connection with him and all the brothers in this special event in, in Vienna. That is back in 2005, it was, né? and it just did those video series like in April and May, and May we were then in, in Vienna. Né? Oh, what a blessing and honor that was. It must have been just wonderful. Thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. All right, so open up for last statements. If anybody else would like to say something, if you want to share something, Joe or Christiana. Your heart will do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Joe, for showing up. You're a very valuable brother in the association of how we were joining with him uh, in this presence of God's grace and love. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, everyone. I have one song more for uh, just taking all that with us as we walk into whatever reflection of our mind of this day and yeah, bring this grace with us to share in that certainty that we are not the body, we are free, we are as God created us. Thank you. Thank you. The most wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a joyous week. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Indeed. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thanks. God bless.